Okay, welcome back. We are on page two, section A, uh, different situations for revenue recognition. To kind of help you understand what needs extra steps taken. So here are some different situations for revenue recognition. Um, allocation of transaction price. When a sale price is given, it must be broken down into separate performance obligations such as installation price and sales price. So it's split into two. <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, for example, you guys, when you did assets in intro, I know this is a time ago, but when you had assets being sold in a group in intro, for example, you sell building, equipment, and, sorry, the land, the building, and their equipment. Well, often you give one price. So we'll sell it for a million a million dollars. So, as we know, those assets have to be broken down into three because land isn't even um, depreciable, so we're going to have to figure out the way to take it off, the portion of land we're selling. So, remember we did it in ratios? That's the same kind of thing we're doing here. We just have to put the total piece into each kind of revenue. Then there's something called the right of return. If there is a known expectation that items may be returned, an estimate must be made for and accounted for in the initial transaction. Okay, so this has to be estimable. Now, first try, at, let's say a new product. You don't know how much is going to be returned. So you use your best guess. And as we know, we can change that going forward, prospectively, as we go to the next year. Now, repurchase agreements. If a company enters into a repurchase agreement, it will allow them to transfer an asset to a customer, but have an obligation or right to repurchase the asset at a later date. Okay, so it's generally reported as a financing trend with borrowing. Now, you'll see that in 360 similar to leases. Okay, bill and hold. A contract under which one entity bills another customer for a product, but the entity retains physical possession of the product until it's transferred to the customer in the future. For whatever reason, it could be as simple as um, <coughs> The customer really wants to buy your goods. They don't have warehouse space right now. You hold on to it for them. <clears throat> You may charge them rental space, all kinds of things. It could come up in a price, a lower price, uh, sorry, a higher price for them, something like that. Now, you will find these last two <laughs> very interesting since we've talked about consignment sales through chapter, well, four and five, and they didn't really well. So, a principal agent relationship. The principal provides the goods and services to be sold, and the agent arranges for the items to be sold to the customer. The amounts collected on behalf of the principal are not the agent's revenue, they're just a helper. The commission collected from the agent would be the revenue. So that would be the revenue for the agent. We'll just make it clearer. <coughs> so a consignment. Let's say you own a small boutique clothing, okay? Now, <clears throat> you've noticed in the times it's been a little rough, and so you haven't sold all your merchant, okay? So then you decide to have thread up in case you've heard of it. Um, ThreadUp is an online consignment shop and they're going to sell your overstock for you. Okay? Um, 
You are the consigner. And the consignership is the consign E. So, what happens? Okay, so you ship your stuff you can't sell to thread up. They don't give you money, they're selling it for you. So, you're the consigner, you ship the inventory to thread up. Thread up acts as an agent, so they're the agent. that sells your inventory. So even though you've shipped the stuff to them, because they have to, you know, see if it's designer and in good shape and all that, so although possession has transferred, legal title remains with the seller. So you keep the title. T, I can't spell. So the goods held by the seller are listed as inventory on consignment but not held on the books so it is not an asset to thread up. They've got a bunch of stock but it's not there so they can't list it on their books as an asset because it belongs to you. When the merchandise is sold, thread up gives the cash to you. And of course, they take any commission or other expenses that were in the contract. Let's say they charged you for holding fee if it was over 10 days, something like that. Because of course, if they're holding, they can't fit in other things. And then the signer, so that's you, recognizes the sales revenue and the expenses, the commissions, etc and the cost of goods sold and removal of consignment inventory. So in the middle of you shipping the stuff, it hasn't been sold by ThreadUp, you keep your inventory on your books. ThreadUp does not have it on their books. They also don't have a liability to owe you money. So, you came in the middle of that process. You inventory on your books. So you keep title and keep inventory on your books. Then once it's sold, then the inventory changes hands, the thread up keeps their commission and sends you the rest. And that you get money. Red up keeps can get keeps commission and you record the sale and expense. Okay, so that's how consignment works. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. I will put a note. Um, telling you it's a good idea to maybe read this page on page before you write the exam. It might clarify things. <coughs> and just so you know, I wrote to the publisher and said, you can't just throw this. And they've replied and they will look into it for the next volume. Okay. There's two more kinds we want to talk about and then we'll start some examples. Okay, so we're continuing with, I want to say weird ways of recognizing revenue, but just different types moving on from intro. So, warranties. Now, you guys did do warranties in intro. I'm pretty probably can't remember it. But, so companies often provide one of two types of warranties. Now, you might not have talked about those to customers. Warranties that the product meets the agreed on specifications in the contract at the time the product is sold. That's an assurance type warranty. Okay? It'll work. If it doesn't work, bring it back. And then there's warranties that provide additional service, usually an additional cost, beyond the warranty type, sorry, the assurance type warranty, and that's called a service warranty. 
Assurance type warranties are included in the price of the good or service. Service types are not, so you're paying extra. Right? So you go to buy some electronics, um, you go and they say, okay, it's covered for your warranty. That would be your assurance type warranty. And then they say, but you can have an additional two years coverage for X dollars. That's the service, service warranty. I'm really having problems speaking. Now, non-refundable upfront front freeze. Front of, oh my goodness. Non-refundable upfront fees. Companies sometimes receive payments or upfront fees from customers before they deliver a product or perform a service. These generally or often relate to the initiation, activation, or setup to be provided or performed in the future. So if part of your oh, buying a hot tub and the installation and stuff is included, then you might have to pay up front a certain amount for them to bring it and set it up and then transfer the ownership to you. Now, in terms of all these different things, they're not all the same, right? Because as you know from your law class, you can write all kinds of different contracts as it's, you know, not contravening the law. So you could say, well, it's going to be five stages, and this stage does this, and then the next two stages are together, but you don't have to pay up front for those, right? You can do all kinds of things. Okay, so what I want you to do now is read this warranty question, and if you don't have a blank space on the back of your page, because I failed to consider adding a page for our five steps. Just grab another one and put it on pause and read through the question, find a blank page or do it on the back of this page. Put it on pause till you're ready and then come on back. Okay, so let's read the question. December 31st, 2020 Carla Vista Company sells production equipment to Tamarask for $49,500. They include a one-year assurance warranty. I should think there should be a comment, comma here. One-year assurance warranty service, a oh, warranty service. That's, I don't know where to stop reading. With the sale of all its equipment. So they give you that one-year assurance. Remember you know, the automatic one that comes with the price. The customer receives and pays for the equipment on December 31st, 2020. Carlo Vista, now this is where the measurable part comes in, estimates this to be 48200 for the equipment and 1300 for the cost of the warranty. So they've broken down the 49500 into the two pieces, 48200 and 1300. In addition to the assurance warranty, Carla Vistas sold the customer an extended warranty, so that's the service type, for an additional two years, so then we're looking at 22, 23, because this was right at the end of 20, and it costs 650. We need the journal entry to record this transaction on December 31st, 2020. My video is going to run out and cut me off, so I'm just going to pause it and switch paper, the blank page.